Okay, so you're talking about traveling in a lot of different places. In your mind, are the venues that you see and the audiences that you come to face to face with there, are they any different than here? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of variety out there. Mm -hmm. um, so do you really have to investigate the places you're going to go play beforehand? I, you know, we, I try, and yeah. I'm trying to connect more with people and bands in the area, too, mm -hmm. to get their opinion and try to do set something up with them, mm -hmm. because usually if they're local, they'll know the best place to play. But, you know, there's, there's similar places as in here in Greensboro, but... You know, maybe not a lot of people come out, or maybe like tons of people come out because it's the only thing going on in the town. Yes. And, you know, and we can make anywhere from like twenty dollars to twelve hundred dollars. You know, depending on. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was like a that was last month for Halloween. Really. In West Virginia. You went from a one gig that paid twenty dollars to one gig that paid twelve hundred. No, the twelve hundred dollar one was there. Oh. oh okay. But, but you know, Baltimore, we got like twenty dollars once because it was just tipping and that's the whole band folks right yes. the whole band yes that's a scary so, thought mm -hmm. you, uh, you're really <laughs> stepping really out is. over the edge of the cliff all the time aren't <laughs> <Yes>. you <laughs> but somehow i'm still able to pay the bills somehow i don't know but uh -huh. um it just depends it's a roller coaster for sure and it, you know like it seems in the south it, it, the south in general pays better and it just depends on the town, too, on whether people are really into it or what time of year it is. Well, how many um, clubs say, uh, yeah, we book pleasantly bonker bands? In our, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you, you know, really have to kind of find some places, don't you, that you know you're going to fit. Yeah. Yeah. I just send out lots of emails and like, whoever I hear back from and if right. it's worth it. And it's also, it's snowballing now, too, because when we played in West Virginia, Mm-hmm. Somebody saw our flyer there, didn't see the show, just saw the flyer, and was intrigued by the flyer, mm -hmm. and looked up the website and looks for an opera house, an old Victorian opera house, two hours south of West Virginia, and wants uh -huh. to have us for their season next year. Oh, um, wow. So, and you're probably going to find that in all the places that you have visited now, the, the word's going to spread about right. who you are and what you're yeah. doing. and yeah. Maybe that that job will get easier yeah. for you. I think, yeah, it is definitely gradually getting easier. Maybe people will start calling you. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> As I was reading, it, it became clear to me that you, this road that you're on, you're kind of calling the shots and deciding how it's going to happen and what it's going to look like and where it's going to go. Um, that, to me, sounds like it requires a lot of confidence. Were you always this confident? No, always? definitely not. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, I mean, before, three years ago, I was always in other people's bands or maybe co kind of collaborating. Um, but then I finally decided that I was going to do my own thing and write mm -hmm. my own stuff. Um, because bands generally sometimes break up, and I didn't want to risk that anymore. Yeah. And because I wanted to just keep going and, you know, get whoever can come play with me to play with me to fill out the sound. But um, it was always going to be you driving it no matter who else was there. Right. Okay. Yeah. But, you know, definitely doing it a lot, doing it a lot in the past three years has built up my confidence mm -hmm. a lot. Um, and I've dealt with a lot of different kinds of people, you know, and sometimes, sometimes it's kind of hard with egos getting in the way and, um, you know, trying to decide if, have, did I make the right decision on this or that, or, you know, paying people and, you know. You're talking about other musicians that you've worked with? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. So, um, with this project. I yeah. Mean, there probably didn't been at least 15 or so different people. Or more that have in played. Crystal Bright and yeah. the Silver Hands. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Wow, fifteen, really? Uh, yeah, at least. How do you keep it together when there's so many people kind of weaving in and out? Is it's it? It's hard. I mean, yeah. It's just having tenacity and drive, and like, well, this is what I'm doing, so I have to make it work somehow. So do you keep people like on standby? You say, "Here's my material. Kind of look it over and maybe be ready for a call." Yeah. Wow. Yeah. There's a. Um, couple different, a few different drummers and bass players mm -hmm. that are like that. You know, whoever can come, 
you know, that when they can, they come. And on tour, it's generally harder because right. we're just so busy. That's why I can't keep steady bass player, for instance, mm -hmm. because we're all the time traveling and playing. So. And when you go from twenty dollars to twelve hundred dollars, it's hard to tell somebody what they're gonna yeah. make when yeah. they're out there, right? Mm -hmm. Wow. So that's the challenge. Mm -hmm, wow, you have to have a lot of faith. On the other hand, is it kind of cool, though, with the different ensembles that the music takes on a little yeah. bit of flavor? Yeah, definitely. So it, it doesn't get tired in that respect, right? Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's cool. But I'm a person that likes to kind of know what to expect. So <laughs> it's it would be kind of nerve-wracking for me, I think, <laughs> you know, wondering, well, who's going to be going out this time? But I, I admire yeah. you for that. That's awesome. Thanks. Yeah, no, seriously. I mean, it's definitely frustrating sometimes because we've gone through long spells of having to rehearse a lot with new people and mm -hmm. that's pretty f on the same material and so yeah. it's really hard to work on new stuff when you're always constantly teaching and rehearsing the old stuff um so i'm it's a, i'm also been i've also been very frustrated about how i haven't been able to work on new stuff as much um, do you have some material in line for another cd or is yeah, there's Something um there. there's about four or five songs that I've been working on mm -hmm. um, that I think I'm probably going to release an EP mm -hmm. because it's probably going to be a while before the other songs are finished because <laughs> yeah. I have so many things unfinished. And then just release it probably with the live album of our Blind Tiger show that was at the, uh, it was the Cabaret. With the red? Not with Cabaret. the Red Elvis. No, 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 no. It was before that. The big Cabaret <laughs> show me. that we had. We got, a, we got a HD video of it, and so we're going to do... Hopefully, do a DVD and some videos with the live album mm -hmm. of our cabaret show that we did with um, Sydney, that had the aerial, the aerial mm -hmm. silk aerials and some awesome acrobatic oh, wow. acrobats kind of Cirque from du Soleil yeah, a little bit. yeah, and wow. burlesque. That'll be cool. More of an adult yeah. Cirque du Soleil. <laughs> okay, I'm glad you said that. <laughs> Don't want the wrong people tuning in. 